Welcome back on this Tuesday. It's February 7th. Jim Coyle with you as always. Joined now by the incomparable Chronic Hoosier. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. Brought to you by our good friends from Andy Moore Honda. Number one Honda dealer in Bloomington. Make sure you go to andymorehonda.com for the greatest in new and used vehicles. No one better than Andy Moore to power Indiana Sports Speed Radio. Uh, another game tonight uh, coming off of a, a hugely emotional win for uh, the Hoosiers chronic. Uh, not so much different than last season when Indiana knocked off Purdue for the first time in uh, eight or nine tries. They had just fallen into uh, disrepair in that regard. But um, last year was hugely emotional. This year was while emotional, it was more, more business-like. So I, I'm not expecting – I don't see a, a letdown from this team, even though it's a quick turnaround against a team that we know is, is a tough-type team. Uh, I think Indiana has reached a level now, and it really showed in, in their play on Saturday the, the intensity that uh, I, I think that they know that – they have to play like that. Um, and anything less than that, you're, you're, you're not going to win a lot of games in this league. Yeah, I hope so. And, you know, as much as, uh, as much as you want to revel in that, that win against Purdue, and it was a great win for Indiana. That was a, a, a statement win for the team um, in a number of different ways. It was, uh, I thought it was critically important for them to, um, to kind of right the ship after Maryland and get back to playing the type of basketball that we've seen them play here in the last month uh, and some change. Uh, but I think it's going to be paramount for them, you know, to remember what happened last year after Purdue uh, for all the exhilaration of that game on a relatively short turnaround. You know, we played uh, Purdue on a Thursday last year, and then we hosted Michigan uh, just a couple days later that Sunday and absolutely laid an egg. Uh which kind of erases all those good feelings to see a team play as badly as they did. Uh, this year, I think Indiana is certainly a little wiser. Uh, I think they're certainly a little more capable than the team that we uh, we rolled out last year. But the lesson remains the same, and, and the stakes are even higher right now. Uh, because, you know, while Indiana was kind of in flux from a tournament situation last year, uh, at that point they were pretty solidly in, only to do some sliding there in February. Um this is a team that's in contention still for, for Big Ten placement. And, you know, with, with the log jam that's currently sitting uh, in the upper echelon of the Big Ten just behind Purdue, uh, this is a game that's going to decide, help decide Friday uh, by games. Uh, with Rutgers coming in, currently sitting in number two in the conference, Indiana could vault into a, uh, a tie for second place with a win tonight. Or, conversely, you can slide way, way back down the line with the loss. Uh, you know, this is literally one of those games where you can be a Friday bye or you can be looking uh, at, you know, Thursday, Wednesdays now in play. So I, I think it's going to be paramount for Indiana to uh, have a short memory, uh, not let that high keep them uh, keep them too high going into this. Because as you and, uh, and Mike DeCourcy were talking about beforehand, this is an extraordinary test for them. And it's in a lot of ways a completely different test than what Purdue posed, uh, because this is not the type of team that's going to come in here and get rattled as you saw some of those baby boilers, uh, this is just what Rutger does. They come into your home court and they beat good teams because they play tough, connected basketball. Uh, Steve Peichel has done a tremendous job building a culture there that's that's literally built for this type of an environment, and they've been wildly successful. So it's going to be important for Indiana to forget about everything and focus on this game and do what they did against Purdue. You know, quite honestly, uh, Trace, as, as I said last week, we all knew Trace is going to get his. It's just who the kid is. He's a beast right now. Just like you knew Zach Eady was going to get his. The difference, though, Indiana had uh, had better guards and they had better supporting cast across the board. And that's what it's going to take, I think, uh, again tonight, just in a totally different style of basketball. Indiana's going to have to be very, very deliberate with their possessions. Uh, and they're going to have to work the glass. They're going to have to work the glass against Rutgers and limit second chance. Yeah, Rutgers are, has been a a, a very uh, Jekyll and Hyde team. They got swept by Iowa, uh, losing both home and road games. Uh, they have beaten 
Northwestern in a tight game. Uh, they beat Ohio State in a tight game. Ohio State obviously not having a very good season. They lose easily to uh, at Michigan State. They lose or they do. They win. They crush Penn State at home. Uh, then they lose again uh, at Iowa. Uh, th- then they crush Minnesota. And then they get the return victory over Michigan State at home. But now they go back on the road. And uh, I, I don't think that they've they've been so-so on the road, but they're a team that has this New Jersey type toughness that they've adopted. uh, And, and it doesn't matter what you draw from, but when you're drawing from that toughness, that's, that's how they, like you said, that's how they play and that's how they have to play. And they're going to have to really bring that uh, into Simon Scott assembly hall because the Simon Scott assembly hall crowd is tasting blood now. Uh, I think this team is tasting blood. Now, Trace Jackson Davis, I just watching his mannerisms in that game the other day. Um, but more importantly, Jalen Hood Shafino and his his maturity uh, has been awesome to watch. No, no doubt. And I, honestly, I think that's the difference. You throw in, uh, you know, Trey Galloway uh, absolutely played a critical role in, in that Purdue win, you know, Miller cops six points were pretty quiet, but I thought Miller was extraordinarily active that game. Um, you know, Malik Renew uh, being able to to keep himself on the floor long enough to actually make a contribution. Uh, all those contributions, you know, kind of makes up for uh, for race still trying to get back into shape. For obviously, we're still dealing with the absence of Xavier Johnson. Um, you know, as we saw in the in the first half of Purdue, when everybody steps up like that and you're getting contributions across the board uh, and you're locked in and you're connected defensively, it's going to allow this team to withstand some of the adversity that, that you know they're going to face, whether it be fouls, whether it be injuries, uh, you know, uh, just mismatches uh, that Indiana finds themselves disadvantaged and um, ways to weather the storm, if you will. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's it's got to be a total team effort. It cannot just be the Trace Jackson Davis show. And, you know, it can't even just be Trace and and Jalen. There's got to be additional legs to the table because the table can't stand on two legs. You've got to have at least a third, if not a fourth and a fifth guy out there that's able to uh, play above their averages and and help tilt the game. And uh, I I think what we've seen with this team here recently is the confidence is uh, is growing. Uh, The confidence appears to be contagious. And, you know, I think it's most reflected right now on the defensive end, seeing these guys round closer back into the form uh, that we felt they were capable of coming off of last season. And, you know, uh, it's one of those weird things in college basketball when when defense is clicking, the offense seems to get a whole lot easier. And when even when Indiana was really able to uh, to put some points up when the defense isn't there, when it's not connected, nothing matters. And uh, I think this is going to be the supreme example of that tonight because this is probably the most disciplined team on the schedule, uh, at least from a defensive standpoint. They're going to put a premium on possessions because they will absolutely penalize you when you lose focus or when you're not playing together connected basketball. So got to maximize the possessions, got to take care of the ball, but we got to get uh, we got to get other guys going besides Jalen and Trace. Well, and Miller Cop is someone I have been pretty critical of because – Basically, he had not been bringing much, and uh, and I thought that it, that criticism was deserving. But at the same time, when he is, I'm going to do the opposite, and especially this past game. And it wasn't just this past game, but it really stood out against Purdue. Uh, he, he hit the two first half uh, three pointers, took three shots, which he hasn't been taking any shots until late in the game. So that was an aggravating thing. I'm like. Dude, what are you doing? Uh, it's not you're not out there for defense, and everyone kept saying, "Well, they're not leaving him." He wasn't moving, and that Purdue game, he was all over the place, and that was a big reason on why Indiana had better spacing. It helped Trace Jackson Davis tremendously in a game that needed more space to give him room, and he had room to operate, uh, and it made a a huge difference, and so. Miller Cobb gets that credit. He has to stay active like that. If they're going to stay on him, great. Move, go all over the damn place, drag them with you, create a little, create a little havoc. Race Thompson 
uh, contributing what uh, you know, I guess he could, but he was four four at the free throw line. Very important uh, that he hit those those free throws because Purdue lost the game partly at the free throw line. What were they? Uh, Ten of seventeen. They left seven points <laughs> on the board. They lose by five. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I totally think it, uh, turnovers in that first half, um, oh. a- allowing Indiana to get in transition, and then uh, you, you know, like a good team does, you knew they were going to make a run, um, and they came awful close, uh, you know, for much of the uh, the final quarter of the game, really. Uh, but the ability to convert at the line uh, was huge for Indiana, uh, was really detrimental for Purdue. But at the end of the day. Indiana hit the baskets when they needed to. Indiana and, uh, hit the shots. That's what it came down to. One other guy, and I'm not wanting to point out specific people because it was a, a, a collaborative effort, but Caleb Banks, what he has been doing in the few minutes he's been getting, he got only seven minutes in the game against Purdue, but he scored four points. He was two of, he got four shots off in seven minutes. Miller Cop yeah. got three off in 29. And three uh, boards and an assist. I mean, he was yes. he was finding ways to make his impact felt. And, he you know, was his. It, it looked like there were seven people out there when he was playing. The there were just arms flying from white jerseys, and uh, it was it was fun to watch. To be honest with you, it was a great defensive effort. But it's one of those things as well that Indiana is going to absolutely need on nights when you know different position, but when Tamar Bates isn't really contributing in a lot of ways playing a lot of minutes, but just not really making an impact on the game. It uh, doesn't matter how many minutes you get, you got to make the most of them. And, you know, to see that from banks, to see renew trending in the direction he's going right now, I think those are absolutely promising signs for Indiana as a, uh, you know, as we're now a quarter of the way through February at this point, uh, this is the part of the season when you really want to be sharpening those edges and getting everybody involved because, you know, there's still a decent amount of ball left to be played. Uh, who knows what the future holds from an injury standpoint? Uh, you've still got a number of road games where you know the whistles aren't going to be very friendly. You've got to have guys that are that are not just uh, poised but ready to come out and contribute when there's numbers when their numbers called, because there's there's likely going to be a lot of opportunities ahead for these guys based off situational matchups down the road. So you love to see all the pieces starting to come together right now. I know there's a, a lot of folks continue to talk about, you know, X's potential return and the promise that that may give. Uh, at the end of the day, he ain't there yet. We don't know that he's going to be. Uh, if you're suiting up for the game, uh, down to every, every man on the bench, even Anthony Leal for that point, these guys got to be ready to step up when their number is called. And, uh, you know, we're seeing it right now, and I think you're seeing that uh, that payoff in the results in the win column for Indiana.